Right, hey guys, I am Unipro and welcome back to the beginner series replay analysis uh, part 3. So today we have a replay sent in by the Raging Spirit. Um, he's a fairly new player, but he has uh, dedicated a lot of time to the game already and has quickly climbed up the ranks. Uh, and I've just heard today that he just reached champion, so a big congratulations to him. Um, really a sign of what you new players can do. Um, and if you just put in the time, and effort and you really think about the game you really can climb up the ranks pretty fast so today we are going to be talking about a match he played between Cat, Seeker of Freedom uh, mainly played as just a, a creature based deck with a bit of support from unique creatures and a couple of fortunes um, and then serious stacks so for those of you who don't know I'll just give a quick rundown um, stack decks are based on a couple of new creatures um, where basically you'll play a copy of the same creature on top of it um, and that's going to multiply the value of the original stats based on the amount of stacks you do have. So guys, today I'm mainly going to be focusing on when to be the aggressor, when you should start going for damage, um, how you need to play, do you need to make trades or do you need to try and get damage in early. So without further ado guys, let's get the game going. So he, he has a quite a nice curve here. He does not have a one drop, uh, but that's okay. He does have some strong creatures in his hand. Um, fortunately for him, Syria does not have a two drop either. So we choose to play the Storm Range Hunter. Perfectly fine. Um, he does have the option of moving in the back row instead, uh, but it's fine. He does have a couple of shooters in hand that he can support with. So his opponent plays a Vampire Knight. Uh, now, for those of you guys who don't know, this has a life drain of 2 and immune to retaliation. So what this basically means is any creature with just 2 attack uh, isn't really going to get any progress done. Um, just a small mistake here. Guys, uh, he did have the option of playing one of these 3 drops, the War Elephant or the Blood Core Shaman. Uh, instead, he just play the Harpy. So early on, guys, we, I really need to address this. We want to be spending our resources efficiently. We want to be getting um, as much of our threats out onto the board as we can. So now he has a board presence uh, equal to say 4 resources when he couldn't have it equal to 5 resources. Um, and there's really no advantage at this situation to not playing the 3 drop. So guys we're going to try and stay on curve um, and get those sets out earlier. Um, and the problem here, he does need to play around Broken Bridge which will bounce back horror to his hand um, by keeping his creatures separated. But without making some kind of stack lane, uh, he's no way he can get through these vampire knights with just two attacks. Uh, once again, a similar mistake here, choosing not to play the Blood Core Shaman, uh, which could potentially deal with one of the vampire knights, uh, or he can just, you know, get another strong threat out onto the board. Uh, now, leaving the Storm Rage Hunter uh, down that bottom row is a bit questionable as. Um, He's really not going to make any progress on that Vampire Knight that's just going to heal everything back up. Um, and at the very least, he should have moved it back into this back row uh, to avoid Geyser. So against decks with Water Magic, have Ice Meteor and Geyser, you want to try and keep your creatures from uh, being adjacent to each other. So that's just small positioning things. Um, and just try and play on curve. Um, I'll so he's choosing to leave the Harpy uh, in that top lane for now um, and it's not something I'm uh, too fond of as you know against that Vampire Knight um, you really need to have a creature out there with more than two attack um, or a lane that equals more than two attack as really uh, any damage you do to it will just instantly get healed back up mm -hmm. it's going to slowly whittle you down uh, while you're going to do no damage in return so unfortunately, he's kind of forced to stack his creatures, which will play into Milk Moon Silk Strand. Um, it's going to render those cre creatures uh, pretty useless in terms of offense, um, but they still have some uses in terms of defending and potential sacrificial altars. So as we can see, uh, the stacks are starting to come out from Syria. So it did have a base value of one zero two. Since it has three stacks, it's going to get multiplied by three, leaving it at three zero six. Now he does have Zephyr in hand eventually. Um, first ability can be really nice for bouncing back a stack creature, as is one of the main counters to stacks. 
So just a small mistake here, just leaving the Harpy out again at 17 health. We're not too worried about uh, health total yet, and really it's not going to accomplish anything in that top row. It's just going to die for free, so I'd rather move it down. So as we can see, Siri is starting to apply a huge board presence with those stacks. Um, so one thing you really want against stack decks is AOE. Uh, often you can get your opponent to, uh, you know, fill the board, empty their hand, and then you can just get them with a really nice clear. Uh, so guys, just an, another thing I want to touch on now. So, um, when when you're playing, there's no real clear way to say which deck should be the aggressive deck. Now, obviously, some matchups definitely one deck is going to be more aggressive, but you also have to consider the uh, the game situations that you're currently facing. So, as we can see here, the Raging Spirit has um, quite a lot more cards in hand, and it also has really high value cards in hand. So, his main priority should be stabilizing the board. And once he does, then he knows he can win in the long run. So what he chooses to do instead here, he chooses to play the Blood Core Shaman um, in this row t to kill off the creatures, um, allowing him to attack um, 3 damage to the hero. But he would kill the same amount of creatures just by attacking Damran into the remaining creature, um, and he could have used that extra damage to kill off either the Vampire Knight or the Tactician. So he's choosing to do 3 damage. Um, instead of killing off a creature, and this will come back to hurt him as stack decks, first of all, are reliant on a really um, high board presence, um, and they also um, they don't really come back very well. So we should choose probably kill, choose to kill off the creatures there, um, as three damage with such a high life total uh, isn't really going to do too much. So that's just something small uh, you really want to think about if you should be being aggressive. Um, and if you should start blocking. Nonetheless, he's starting to get a board out there, although his board is currently pretty uh, vulnerable to Geyser. His opponent does play quite a nice card, Bone to Bone, which is going to deploy three skeleton melee shooter tokens uh, on each battleground position where a friendly creature died last. So, uh, it can, in situations, be the correct play, maybe not to insect swarm a whole board if your opponent seems to clearly left their board really open to it, just to play around that card. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't have the second uh, insect swarm. So he does play Zephyria, correctly bouncing back the, the biggest stack to the thing. Moves the Vampire Knight. Uh, not really a lot he could do there. Okay, so he's thinking about if he wants to use that sacrificial altar. Now, I've got to say, I would probably advise against it unless maybe you're thinking of doing it with the Damran onto the Vampire Knight. Uh, but I'm not really a big fan of that. I think I would just attack, pass a turn, and then use the Rise of the Nethermancer uh, and get some of those creatures out of the Necro Graveyard, which always is a good thing. It's one of the reasons we run the card. So he makes um, a bit of a mistake here, going really aggressive um, and sacrificial altering to get a damage in. Now, at first it seems, you know, he's getting a damage in, um, he's applying pressure on his opponent's life total, but you have to consider when going for such a move, how you really go for your opponent's face, is how you're going to get that extra damage through. Uh, now, at the moment his board is pretty vulnerable, you know, he only has two health on the shaman, um, and an extra 2 damage will kill off Zephyria as well. So, with no Shredders in hand, um, it's going to be really hard for him to push through that damage, especially considering we know a stack deck can flood the board, which will make it even harder. So, yeah, I think that was a, a pretty big mistake, um, as he's not really in a position to push through damage. Um, and the only time I would make a move such as that, if I, I had a lot of uh, ways I know I can push through damage in my hand, or if I basically know if I don't if I don't kill him quickly, then the game will be over. So he still doesn't have chances in this game, uh, and that's probably a key mistake. It is tempting to do a damage to the face. I do understand, guys, um, but we need to be disciplined in the board control, even though uh, we might be playing an aggressive deck. 
So as we can see, Siri is able to flood the board completely. Um, I will really land on another insect swarm here, and even then, it will be hard to come back. So his opponent makes a small mistake, killing off his own creature uh, before playing these. But we're still going to need a lot. So he does have some options to kill off some creatures uh, using stuff like the Shredder and a War Tent. So if he, let's say he uh, moved it into one of these lanes, um, a Shredder um, plus a War Tent on Zephyr would kill off two creatures. Um, and that could get him two damage onto a target row. But really, uh, the game is pretty much lost from here. You know, so what I probably would have chosen to do here, uh, it's a pretty tough turn, you know, just get a couple of creatures out, um, and maybe get some enraged counters with the war tent on Zephyria. Uh, I mean, as there's no real reason, uh, Zephyria is just going to die off to this vampire now anyway. Um, he does still have, you know, slight chances. If he can get double insects form, let's say, his opponent's out of cards, uh, then he can win because he does have card advantage and I've talked about card advantage a lot before uh, basically though card advantage is only relevant uh, if you can survive on the board so don't be too greedy going for card advantage guys but something to definitely keep in the back of your mind so here his only real out is the double insect swarm which he doesn't draw uh, so now he has to go on the full defense And by, by now he simply doesn't have enough creatures uh, or resources to defend, so that will be the game. Now guys, um, a couple of complicated things in there really can be difficult to determine when you should be aggressive, but it's important to remember being aggressive does not just mean attacking your opponent's face, it means deploying lots of threats um, and making plays for board control because a lot of decks cannot come back from board control so that is the main weakness of these stack decks is sure when they're working they're getting lots of stacks out it can be incredibly powerful but if they lose board control it's really really difficult for them to come back in the game so we need to make sure we use those AOEs the best we can uh, we be careful around stuff like bone to bone um, and we really make those trades that will allow us to clear our opponent's board because without a board they really can do nothing against you, they have hardly any removal. So thanks a lot to the Raging Spirit uh, for sending in that replay, there's no doubt he's improved um, and congratulations on getting to champion. So you will be sent your code via email. So thanks again for watching guys, um, I really appreciate everyone sending in the replays and feel free to keep sending in those replays. So I have been getting a lot of emails with replays which is absolutely fantastic um, and if it those of you guys um, that might know him, Hectoring, a uh, fellow A1 member of mine uh, and a friend, uh, he has offered to help with some of the replays um, just because we want to we want to help you guys as much as we can. We want to get all those replays analyzed, so keep sending them in. A uh, big thanks to him to doing that, and I will link his uh, YouTube channel in the description, guys. I do recommend you check him out. So keep sending him in. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Have a good one.